No island-dwelling tyrant is complete without a big pile of ill-gotten gains, and we've managed to persuade Evil Genius 2's hoarders to give us a glimpse of their loot. Hello and welcome to the channel. Evil Genius 2's finally out on Steam, can you believe it? And like many of you, we've been getting our teeth into that first playthrough this week, fine-tuning our lava lamp placement, sniffing out investigators, and generally learning World Domination 101. And as it turns out, when you treat planet Earth like a big piggy bank full of goodies to be plundered for your own amusement, pretty interesting things get shaken loose onto the carpet floor, like loot items. And while loot isn't totally unfamiliar to us as gamers, you know, put on plus four boots of charisma, charm goblin to death, ransack plus five boots of charisma from its twitching corpse, in Evil Genius 2, all loot items are unique and, well, worth knowing about. So get settled in and we'll tell you a bit about some treasures and trinkets we uncovered on the world map, what they do, how to get them, and what else is out there for the taking later on in the game. If you're new to the channel, hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications will make it super easy to catch more videos like this as we drop them, and if you enjoy this one, consider giving us a thumbs up. YouTube likes that. Now then, let's begin the super villain show and tell. That's not a thing swords normally do. Before we show you some of the loot you'll be forcing your poor minions to go and retrieve, we'll start with what loot is and how you get it. Loot items are special items that, aside from making excellent talking points with visitors to your lair, will grant you a variety of benefits. This can be anything from a boost to minion resolve to allowing minions to improve their science skills. You'll find these loot quests in the side mission section of your mission window, and accepting one will start you down the path to having one of these statement pieces working its magic. Before you can start any of them, however, you'll need to reach Criminal Network Level 2. To achieve this, you'll need to crack the whip on your science minions and set them to work researching that task. Once they're done, level up the region that contains the quest for the first piece of loot that catches your eye, then set to work. The missions required to retrieve a loot item are often multifaceted. They'll have a few different stages and will require the use of more minions than just those regular old vanilla ones. But what loot is available, I hear you ask? I think I'll hand over to Phil for that one, as I have a feeling he's gonna go the whole hog. We're starting off with the flying pig. There it is, look, gaze in wonder at it. A winged cryptid that falls slightly short of expectation upon arrival, but reveals an unexpected perk nonetheless. The flying pig was the first one I bagged in my first playthrough, and I think it's safe to say this supermarket car park fun ride isn't quite what Maximilian was expecting when he sent out numerous scientists, technicians, and the like across the globe to attain the mythical airborne porcine. Great for mollifying toddlers who've just endured a trip around Asda, not so great for figureheads of a new world order. Still, the porky piece has its uses. When minions ride on it, they get a sense of fulfillment and unadulterated happiness that hauling body bags into incinerators and queuing up to use a bunk bed just can't get them. Their morale skyrockets after just a quick go, so it's a handy addition to the mess hall, or as they insist on calling this space now, the chillax zone. We went to all that effort to capture a flying pig, and you're telling me it was a ride? If you're after a loot item that'll really tie the lair together, a finishing touch that screams visitors not welcome, then might we suggest the sword in the stone. After the iconic weapon fell into the wrong hands, not literally of course, that would be painful, your chosen evil genius has taken it upon themselves to steal it. And after sending those poor minions who drew the short straw off to get it for you, you'll have a truly eye-catching centerpiece hidden in the loot section in the build mode. From Knights of the Round Table to a couple of megalomaniacs round a skull-shaped table. What an upgrade. Unfortunately, it seems as though our geniuses have spent far too much time plotting world domination and not enough time watching classic Disney movies, because to their surprise, no minion is able to lift the sword from the stone. Just look at that. Weakling. After completing another side mission to retrieve some acid, the sword is activated and your minions enjoy a boost to their combat. As nice as it looks here, it's probably best off in a room where the minions, you know, the ones who are actually getting their hands dirty, Emma, can enjoy it. All I wanted was an ancient and powerful magical sword to hold as a symbol over Hammer's head. Next up, we've got the Sands of Time, which I'm sure we all know about first and foremost from the poem by Henry Wandsworth Longfellow. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us. Footprints on the sands of time. Also, it means hourglass. 
But the hourglass you're hunting for in the world map here doesn't just chart the passage of time, it controls it. Worth having then. To get it, you've got to put the graft in because there's a bunch of bloody Time Lords also after it. So you're racing around the world investigating possible sites, fending off invasions in your base, finally locating it, and then doing the research down in the lab to get it over the line. Your reward, other than looking elegant and getting sand everywhere, is a fabled hourglass that automatically repairs items in its area of effect. It's not doing much in this vault then, but you can place it near objects that get a lot of use over time, like here in the training room or down in the science lab, right lads? The equipment stays tip top and your technicians don't need to keep visiting it and repairing it as they do their rounds. Well, you better get started, because if you don't find them, your time might just run out. So far, we've really just scratched the surface with a few loot items available in the early game and what they do, but there's a lot more out there. Later on, you can secure such wonders as this Easter Island head, which actually works as a surprisingly effective security camera, if a bit on the large and chases me around in my nightmare side. Then there's Lady Liberty's lantern, which, and I quote, lets the light of liberty shine on you and only you. Hmm, cryptic. Then there's the golden doors of Fort Knox, the most impenetrable place on the planet, until your workforce turned up and did a legger with the entrance. This door will keep all your other ill-gotten, curious, thingamabobs and who's-its extra safe behind its incredibly solid doors. Then there's the dodo, a famously extinct bird who you probably know from the common idioms dead as a dodo and you can't have a dodo in your lair because there aren't any left. Being a bit of a scientific marvel, the dodo works as a science study aid for your minions and also really jazzes the place up. That's that then, we're suited and looted. Again, these are just a handful of items from the game and as you progress you'll uncover more side stories leading to more loot. Hmm, I wonder if that means that OP totem from Evil Genius 1 is out there somewhere, what do you reckon? I'm off to hunt for it anyway, leave us a like, hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next one.